Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. Here we are doing the weekend update on December 30th, 2017. First and foremost, Happy New Year to all of our traders and viewers. Let's get right into it, discussing a little bit about 2018, maybe some of our expectations. Well, if there's one expectation that I've got, and I'm going to back this up with quite a bit of research, a little bit of homework on this front, the the one big aspect in the change from 2017 into 2018 is the return of volatility. Let's go ahead and get started. With that, we're going to start here looking at an SPX chart. This is a three-year weekly. Clearly, we've seen a wild ascension to the upside at the exact same time, implied volatility of the markets. Now, that's implied volatility of the option markets in the SPX are an ever, okay, nonstop grind to the downside. And it's it's one of the things that I think most traders that have been involved in options in any way, shape, or form have discussed in 2017. It is, for the most part, the lowest volatility on record. So it's very easy for me to come out and say, hey, volatility is going to go up in 2018 because, well, there's really not much lower it can go. However, I want to bring this into light. I want to back it up with a little bit of homework, which I'm going to show you here momentarily. So I ultimately am looking for Okay, an explosion up in terms of implied volatility, which means overall market risk is going to increase substantially and very likely that premium selling, okay, those of you that do sell options, all right, premium selling is going to be a little bit back in vogue in 2018. So why do I think, number one, that implied volatility is going to increase? Well, a lot of the implied volatility Okay, being driven lower and lower has a tremendous amount to do with quantitative easing and specifically the Fed. You have ultimately a tremendous amount of capital that has been infused into markets. Now, that capital has been infused, sure, into the S&Ps, it's been infused into the bond market. The bottom line is, you know, the Fed is not out there lending money to the SPX, okay, but the incredibly low interest rates have made it very easy okay, for banking firms, for trading institutions to go out there to borrow capital at next to nothing and ultimately put it to use in the markets. So what you get is billions and billions of dollars chasing ever smaller returns, which again, what it's doing is choking the volatility. Now, another way that you can look at this, all right, another way you can look at this is not so much in an SPX chart, but, well, thanks to uh, JP Morgan Asset Management, we're going to look at the Federal Reserve balance sheet. And what you happen to be seeing here, as I was talking about that ascension of the markets, well, that's pretty much right in this neighborhood over here. This is going back into the, uh, the financial crisis, obviously coming out of the financial crisis. This is turning on the spigot for quantitative easing. This is the extreme Okay, absolutely extreme QE3, which just shot the balance sheet ultimately to where it currently stands at about 4.5 trillion. Okay, however, what you'll see here is that the, the Fed balance sheet stands at 4.5 trillion, and we are right now at that kind of tipping point. So we're going to start to see a contraction of the balance sheet. This should have direct implications to the volatility of the broader equity markets, being specifically the S&P 500. Now, to look at just the Federal Reserve balance sheet alone, I don't think necessarily does it justice. By the way, this is treasuries, this is mortgage-backed securities over here, and a few other assets that were purchased ultimately by the Fed. So again, just looking at the Federal Reserve balance sheet doesn't necessarily do this justice because the Fed here in the US is only responsible for about 4.5 trillion, okay? In addition to it, Right. What we're looking at is the Fed plus the ECB, which is the European Central Bank, none other than Mario Draghi, and we'll throw the Bank of Japan in here. Again, this is a JP Morgan forecast right now that is displaying what ultimately the balance sheets of all three of the major, I'll call them offenders of quantitative easing, will start full blown contraction, okay, by 2019. Now, at what point? At what point does the marketplace, it's not going to wait for the full-blown contraction, 
all right, of quantitative easing out there, the markets are going to get ahead of that. So one of the things, again, you have to consider here is in the S&Ps, again, the return of volatility. The moment, okay, that again, that capital starts to become less readily available, all right, you're going to see impacts to the bottom lines of everything from stock buybacks, okay, to, again, firms retracting some of the strategies they're using because capital is not as cheap to borrow, meaning that right now, some firm might be able to do a strategy because they're capable of borrowing money maybe at one and a half percent. You know, what happens when the cost of carry of that strategy increases substantially? They stop doing the strategy. Again, all of these factors are equivalent to volatility increasing and possibly increasing substantially into 2018. So that's really what I wanted to start with kind of in this weekend update over here is just, you know, people want to know, hey, what do you see in, in 2018? Well, I see a contraction of the balance sheet and I see the, ex, you know, expansion of volatility. Now, let's get to the markets much more in the prevalent because we had some, uh, well, some interesting trade happened in the last few minutes of the year. And I have to tell you, there's not a whole lot went on this uh, this past week in terms of trade. We're going to look specifically here at the uh, the S and P futures. And when I say this last week, let's start by looking at a 30 day one hour. And again, I found this quite interesting. If you look at the 30 day one hour, I'll just back up a few weeks in time. Some of the most wild volatility that we've seen in the last couple of weeks uh, pretty much happened in the last okay what few hours of the entire trading year. So to zoom into this uh, specifically, now we're in a one day, one minute, okay? The S&Ps were actually seeing, oh, just a little bit of mild sell side activity here in what amounted to very, very minimal volume, okay? We all of a sudden towards the end of the trading session with about 10 minutes to go, see a spike of almost 15 thousand S&P contracts trade. Not everybody necessarily saw this. They weren't tuned in, you know, but hey, you know, this is when everybody's like, ah, oh, it's holiday trade. Nothing's going to happen yet. Do you think algorithms know that? Because apparently nobody told the algorithms because uh, right here you have, you know, what was just a shot across the bow over there. Listen, it was like, you know, two, three point move, nothing big over there until again, the last few moments of the trading session where massive volume was ultimately hitting the markets. Um, this is a minute into the closing bell. That's 141,000 contracts that actually traded inside of one minute. But sell side activity continued after the closing bell in the S&P futures, taking the S&Ps down, again, some 17 and a half handles. But uh, there was some real damage done specifically inside of the NASDAQ at the exact same time. Now, you know, people are going to point out it was Amazon, it was Facebook, it was Apple. No, no, it wasn't really any of those. Sure, there was some sell side activity in those products. Nevertheless, some of the real damage that was done was after the closing bell. And the equity markets are effectively closed at that point. This was sell side activity. So neither here nor there, right? All right, so you saw a little bit of volatility into the end of the year. Great. Well, here's one of the things that you should be a little bit more concerned with. And for that, we're going to go back over to the SPX and I'm going to turn on my expected moves. So these are expected moves that I still, each and every week, draw by hand. And one of the things I think that's in a, uh, a really vast contrast to what we've seen in most of the holiday trade is that uh, the expected move for this coming week. Now, I'm going to remind you that January 1st, New Year's Day, is going to fall on a Monday. So we're just going to have a four-day trading week. And the way that the holidays fell this year, it's a little bit strange. Like, I've kind of questioned, um, are a lot of traders going to come back to work on January 2nd? Because the way the holidays fell this year kind of feels like, no, they're not going to return to work until the week maybe after which is, you know, you're looking all the way into like January 8th, but the markets tell a very different story because if you look at the expected move, and I'm going to take you specifically into this now, we're going to go to the trade tab and close up this left side bar. We're going to open up just the six day options. Now, 
yeah, the options still have six days remaining to expiration, but there's only four trading days in a given week. And we're staring down the face of almost a $30 expected move. Now, a $30 expected move, okay, on a 10% implied volatility, is that high? Well, a $30 expected move is high, okay, according to the fact that, you know, take a look back at some of the previous weeks over here. Most of the previous weeks are five trading days, and they've actually centered around $23 expected moves. Well, all of a sudden, now we have almost a $30 expected move, but only four trading days. So the answer is, okay, yeah, it's a little bit misleading, but it is an extremely high expected move, okay, in the first four trading days of the year. And, well, you need to be aware of that because, hey, you better come in and ready to, uh, ready to trade, ready to fire over there because, again, we are looking at a higher expected move. Now, there's something even more interesting on this front that the SPX volatility picked up a little bit. We're looking again at about a $29 expected move. So I looked over at the Qs as well, okay, because the NASDAQ is something we also track very carefully. And it only had about a 13% implied volatility, $2.23 expected move. And that, interestingly enough, and I'm going to show you here in the, um, in the expected moves, this, interestingly enough, was not that large of an expected move. So I guess the the contrast in here is that all of a sudden the S&Ps, the broader S&Ps are displaying the volatility right now, not per se just the Nasdaq because the Nasdaq here is not really in kind of a threatening stance where the S&P is in terms of expected move. All right, so what kind of gives? Well, into the end of the trading day, I've really looked into this and I wanted to see, you know, what was, was really taking some of the brunt of the hit in, you know, kind of late in the trading day over here. And a, uh, a big portion of it happened to be specific to the financials. Okay. And I pulled up into the financials over here, but the volatility, again, it's raised, but not in an extreme stance over here. Again, all we were able to find is that the broader S&Ps, the broader S&Ps are displaying a bit more volatility, okay? One other aspect I picked up on into the end of the trading day, and that has a lot to do with advanced decline line, okay? This is the S&P 500 sector. Why is this interesting to me? Because towards the end of the trading session, we all of a sudden had what we call full-blown correlation, okay? And I'm even going to show you this in terms of the S&P 100. All throughout the course of 2017, we were seeing that 50-50 advanced decline lines, nothing really brewing out there, okay? And towards the last, you know, 20 minutes of a trading session here of the year, we start seeing correlation come into play. And what that effectively means is there was not, okay, there was not a specific stock or sector that was heavily involved in the sell side activity of what we saw towards the what end of the trading session. All we saw was the S&Ps themselves were being hit, which was just simply reverberating into the individual stocks themselves. Again, this is in much in stark contrast to what we've seen inside of 2017, where again, we see 50-50 advanced decline line, Google would be down, Amazon would be up. This was full-blown sell-side activity over here. Now, okay, we'll move away from that just a bit. So I'll remind you that we are expecting okay, some volatility coming into the first trading week of the year. Another interesting aspect, the queues themselves this week literally tagged the edge and stopped on the edge of their expected move. Okay, let me show you something a little bit off kind of the beaten path over here, other than the fact that we're expecting a bit more volatility. Okay. Off the beaten path, not sure everybody looks at this on a day-to-day -day basis. I do. I just have tendency to keep an eye on a number of kind of key factors. And one of the things that I look at extensively is the VVIX. That's the volatility of the volatility index. Now, as I displayed and I, I started this kind of weekend update with a little bit of forecast, if you will, for, for 2018. And one of the things that we saw that in, you know, over the last couple of years is ever declining 
volatility. Now, we're not looking here per se here at volatility. We're looking at volatility of the volatility index itself. Now, the VVIX is not a tradable product. It's just an equation, okay? An equation effectively on what? Well, it's an equation, okay, on the VIX options themselves. And the one thing I want to point out kind of on this weekend is that the VIX options themselves, okay, are displaying fairly extraordinary risk for a marketplace that is Okay, literally a stone's throw off all-time highs through and through. And again, the way to kind of display this to you is to look at the VVIX. So I'm going to bring up the VVIX, and I'm actually going to bring up the VVIX. Let's just use a three-year weekly in here. Okay, In fact, this product hasn't been around that long. We can actually look back even at a, a five-year weekly. And one of the things that you're going to notice here is that okay, in recent months, there is actually kind of a, a shelf, if you will, underneath the volatility of the volatility index. Okay? For an unknown reason, the volatility remains extraordinarily high in the VIX product itself, which, you're okay, so why? Well, when you come back over to the VIX, and I'm going to take you into the VIX here for just a moment. When you come back over to the VIX, what does the VIX really represent? <clears throat> If the volatility of the VIX is high, what it's indicative of is that traders are out there, and I'm going to open up all the options in here. We're going to look at volume and open interest. Traders are out there. There is a constant demand for options in the VIX itself. Okay, Why is there a constant demand for options? Well, I'll come to that in just a moment, but volatility, you know, people call it what you will. You know, volatility is risk, volatility is fear, volatility is this, it's that. I mean, people call it a million different things. In the end, it's supply and demand. And right now, the demand for way out of the money VIX options is absolutely sky high. That's the only reason, okay, for the VVIX to be all lit up. Now, what is interesting about this, and again, you can look out, you know, some 45 days out, and you're going to see just monumental volume has been trading out here, huge open interest, neither here nor there. But the interesting thing about the VVIX, okay, is just in the last few sessions, okay, the VVIX is also supporting this logic of we're about to see a lot more volatility, okay, possibly this coming week. Um, and I'm showing you right here, the VVIX has been ramping up the past couple of trading sessions. Obviously, it took off to the upside, okay, in the last few minutes of the trading session on, you know, this Friday. Nevertheless, the VVIX was already elevated. So one of the points I want to make is, listen, you know, we, we saw some selling right into the last, you know, couple of minutes of the closing bell, right? There, there, there's some sell side activity. Yes, but that doesn't describe why the VVIX Okay, was already trading just shy of the 100 mark out there. Okay, so it's it's something again that really needs to you have to keep your eye on this because we're not just looking at you know maybe one aspect that says like oh there could be risk. Okay, we're looking at a multitude of different aspects now in the marketplace. We're looking at everything from SPX expected moves which have expanded. Okay, we saw some correlation out there which we haven't seen. We see the VVIX up substantially. Now, all of these factors together, they don't say that the marketplace is going to tank. They're saying that at this point in time, okay, the marketplace perceives there to be, okay, a pretty high element of risk. And again, do not take that as it's, it's so bearish. It doesn't necessarily mean bearish, okay? We are expecting more volatility. It's a tremendous amount of price action that can kind of be construed as all right, switching gears one more time, okay? One of the things that I'm going to be looking at, okay, and one of the opportunities that I think we're going to see a lot inside of 2018, and I said this a bit earlier, is premium selling is going to come back into vogue. And that means, for those of you, if you sell iron condors out there, you want to sell spreads, okay? Option premium selling was really at like just rock bottom in 2017. And you got to understand, I built my career around selling options premium. And in 2017, I sold 
less options premium than in any other previous year that I've traded in. And it's, it's bothersome. So we're going to look for some premium selling opportunities. And one of the things that I'm going to leave you with over here though, is when we're going to start to sell premium, we have to be extraordinarily careful, okay, in stepping into this because markets and market participants, that's, that's you and me, it's traders, investors, okay, we haven't seen any degree of real volatility hit the markets. We need to see volatility with a little bit of shock and awe. We need to see volatility percentiles, okay, clip to the hundredth percentile. And what that basically means is that, you know, what's this IV percentile thing, okay? And I'm going to just display this and I'm going to leave you with a couple of thoughts on this front because I think this is just incredibly, incredibly important. So if I cruise over to one of my styles, I know I've got some uh, IV for the last year, okay, ready to go here. But what those percentiles happen to allude to is if you take a look at the highest level of volatility on the year, okay? and the lowest level of volatility on the year. What the IV percentile really does is it just kind of ranks where IV is. So this would be like the zero percentile, up here would be the hundredth percentile, right? And again, it really isn't an IV percentile, it's more of a rank. So right now, we're towards the lower end of the spectrum. But I wanna remind you, and those of you that are experienced probably get this a bit more, but we haven't seen any real volatility in the last, you know, two to three years. The last time we saw it, like really smoking volatility, you got to go back to the election, you got to go to Brexit, you got to go, you know, to August 2015, yada, yada, yada. But the one thing that people are going to be misled by is the volatility will pick up, okay? But you have to recognize that in inside of the last year of trade, the highest volatility that has been seen in the SPX has been about 16%. Now that is scary. That means if you're gonna go out there and you're gonna run out and you're gonna sell options premium, you might wanna wait till it's at least over 16%. Now that's the highest we've had in the last 52 weeks. People, that's pitiful. Because if you look back at the history of volatility, okay, 16 isn't even catching a stride. I want you to think about that. It's something we're going to be discussing a lot here at Theotrade in the coming days, in the coming weeks, okay? Don't get caught by the implied volatility monster that is lurking out there. Again, have a happy and healthy new year. Thanks, everybody, for joining us at Theotrade. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.